Hello there. I'm Lord Nauticus. How are you? Now, it occurs to me that I've been asked many, many stories about my many, many adventures. And all of them get exaggerated in one form or another. But, in spite of all that, there's one story no one ever asks me to tell. To be fair, not many of them know how to ask it. Or even that it exists. But there is a story here. It is the story of how I came to be where I am now. You see, I remember everything. Every time that I have appeared, I have remembered. I have remembered every adventure that I've ever had. And for every time the name Lord Nauticus has been said, that has been me. I remember it. Which might fill some of you with great sorrow, but to me this is a happy fact. For whatever forces in the universe demand my existence, insist that I continue. And I think that's a wonderful thing to know that your life matters, well mine. But to be gifted with the knowledge of that is something of great satisfaction to me. So whatever sorrows or darkness you may hear in this story, I assure you that the ending is happy. Or it must be, for I am here to tell it to you. There was a multiverse. Well, there's many multiverses, of course. But the one in which I became most infamous, for the first time, had changed, as many of you know. As time... I should go back a bit. Many of you who heard this story Recall the time when I assisted a friend of mine, the wonderful Nitrous, Dr. Sweet, Sweet Dr. Nitrous, in the siege of Castlevania to defeat the vampire Cain. Yes, dear friends, I was there. Well, perhaps I wasn't. I don't understand the full metaphysics of what has happened to me or that has perpetuated my existence, but I remember it. And that's something to be said. Anyway, <clears throat> after the climax of that spurless adventure where my train had sex with Castlevania, I'm sorry, that still tickles me, I sent all of my friends home. As I did, my train rode off into the sunset. And I traveled for a time. And as I did, I began to notice things. I've always felt that I have a unique awareness of the universe and how it functions in a way that others don't, as if I can see behind the veil. It is this vision that I believe I have that allowed me to know what was happening to me then. I began to travel, for a time, between the multiverses. And as I did, I noticed darkness. But not darkness as in the coming of night and one knows that dawn is to come. A rather melancholy sort of darkness. Of a room that is to be sealed and never opened again. Until the day the building itself is demolished. Yes, that is how I would put it. Upon that day, I watched for some time, as places that I had known, places I'd become comfortable with, began to go dark. But it was not a consistent darkness. Rather, it was almost as if the darkness were tears. Tears of great sorrow, and as each teardrop fell, they blotted out another part of the world. Something beautiful and wonderful was just lost in tears and sadness. I began to travel. Some of the worlds were still active. Places that I'd been to and had the opportunity to adventure, but I noticed that I couldn't interact anymore. I couldn't even be seen. I was there, of course, watching. But I was not really there. I was gone. 
I would look at my hands and my train, and I would see that they had faded, that the same teardrop pattern had crossed along. And I imagined for a moment that some great divinity had been forced to a choice that filled them with great sorrow. And with that sorrow, I was disappearing. The Palace of Power was the first to be gone, of course. Snuffed out in tears until there was nothing. It hadn't almost just ended. It hadn't never been. It had always existed, but it just didn't anymore. Next was the <laughs> world of heroes, future Earth of a kind, where men have mighty powers. Another far-flung post-apocalyptic wasteland with a rigorous, rigorous form of judicial system that is the law. And so on and so forth. And then it was my world. My world was the last, I know that. I tried to gather my friends, but there was so little left of them. It was as if they had been standing still all this time, and faded to darkness. Nitroside was the last to go, I remember that as well. He was... he wasn't even sad. It was as if his soul itself had moved on, and all that was left was the shell of the man. And in the end, it was just me and my train going through the darkness. Which was odd, that I still had my sense of self, my sense of presence, every other world and its inhabitants had long since lost their sense of presence, but I remained. I do not feel it was my own will or sense of self that perpetuated me either. I felt as if I had become like a nagging thought in the mind of another, and I was uniquely aware that all the tears around me though they had made my train fade, couldn't just snuff me out. Couldn't let me go. Couldn't let me cease to be, as if doing so was a greater tragedy. I couldn't begin to understand it or explain it. It was just the sense I had of it. And then one day, everything went dark. There was nothing. Not light. Not sound, not even a sense of time. I was... Not even my own physical form remained. Just a sense of me. And my voice. I know my voice remained. I remember that. And I heard... I, I couldn't hear, per se. It was more, again, a sense uh, of it. Of someone asking me a question. Now... You have to understand, I had no form, no ability to perceive, as I said, it was only my sense of self and my voice. But the voice, well, it wasn't a voice, but the sense of it, was conveyed to me, and it was conveyed as a question. And the question itself was, well, it was simple. Do you want to continue? Do you wish to exist again? Normally, I'm a very verbose and, well, audacious individual. I would have a million normal answers for something like this. Say, darling, I'm not done thrusting yet. Darling, there are people out there that don't know I exist. Imagine that. But in this instance, I was, oddly enough, very, very to the point. And I answered simply, with my voice, yes, yes, I wish to exist. And it is almost as if there was a smile, a sense of it, of a grand smile. And then there was light again. I was home. But not my home. Everything had 
been... Oh, how do I put this? Imagine for a moment the emotions you associate with a soil that is rich in elements from other things. It's a mulch, uh, a flesh that has degraded and begun to feed the earth. And then something new being born from it. But somehow the same, but not in its own way. And I was back on my train. The Sabus were there, slightly different, mind you. Little things, minute things. But I could tell. The clean couch was gone. Uh, the train could no longer transform into a giant rope art of any kind. It was as if time had been pulled back for a moment. But this wasn't where I had come from. It wasn't where I, what I remember coming from. And yet new memories flooded into my mind. More details that had never been there before. A grander narrative almost was waiting for me. And I knew it. And I smiled and looked out. I checked things, of course, at first. I checked the local news and found that certain names that I had remembered, <laughs> that they would not yet quite reach the fame that they were going to. But they would, and I knew they would. But it might be different this time. A different sequence of events. A new adventure. And I knew that, for whatever reason, my existence mattered. It mattered enough that I'd be retained. That, that fills me with a great sense of joy. That, even though I may see my friends again, that it, that though we don't remember each other, well, I'll remember them, I'll remember the past, that they'll still be them. That sense of it fills me. That there's more waiting for me, that there's more out there, that, the, that life doesn't truly end, in a sense. It just stops for a while. And then it takes a new form. I don't believe this story has a moral, apart from the fact that I belong somewhere, or that I matter to someone. But, at the same token, it's still a good story, for whatever it's worth. And I rather like it. You can make of it what you will. Am I the original Nauticus? Am I the same one that was there in that fabled city with a chest beam and the ability to multiply myself ages ago? Am I the Lord Nauticus that led Dr. Nitrocyte and his friends to battle Dr. Apocalypse that first time? Which Nautic? Or am I just the newest one? Gifted with the memories of the old and a sense of appreciation for it. I don't know. You know what? I don't need to know. It's not my past anymore that defines me. I am the spirit of discovery. And I have found a new horizon. I intend to make it my plaything. Well, sexual partner for a time. <laughs> anyway, that was my story. I hope you liked it. It is a little dour and serious, but who knows? Maybe there's other stories out there from me. Maybe there's new worlds of discovery. Who can tell? I don't know. And I delight in not knowing. But thank you for listening to me in this rather modern tale. I enjoyed telling it, and I thank you for your indulgence. I'm Lord Nauticus, and if you ever find yourself out next to a pair of train tracks, just say, I feel quite vulnerable. Who knows? Maybe I'll turn up. <laughs> so long!